So I asked you guys on the Industry 4.0 Community Discord server, what is Industry 4.0? It's a video I made last week, I gave my answer, but I was curious to see what you guys said. Many of you guys responded, so I'm gonna go over some of the answers here. Stafer was the first one to respond. Industry 4.0 is the baby of the IT revolution and industrial revolution 3.0. Dan said, the bullet train of automation, all aboard. <laughs> That's awesome, Dan. Uh, Dwayne Warden said, it's an ecosystem where everyone in the stack lives in harmony to exchange information freely and gravitate towards change in real time. Love that, Dwayne. Uh, Tim Harris said, digitalization of a company, top floor through the shop floor. I like that. I like the top floor to shop floor. Brian Manchester said, it's a paradigm shift. Building on the foundation of automation, we now have the information to solve problems we didn't know existed. Vazu said, it's an era where humans automate everything together to solve complex problems and resolve environmental problems. That's a good one, I love that. I love that, very practical. Tom Bo said, transforming data into actionable information for more accurate predictions through automation. John Sindrich said, eliminating data silos. Access all data from anywhere, anytime. Bond Turner chimed in. That's what it's all about. Getting data and information into the hands of the people that need it, when they need it, and in the format they need it. That's right out of Walker's, <laughs> right out of Walker's mouth. Right. Paul O'Sullivan said, making factories work like smartphones. The smartphone for the smart factory. Dundo said, it's one step away from Skynet. <laughs> I love that one. John Sidgett laughed too. Chris Giel said, what you need, when you need it, wherever you are. That's good. Matthew Paris said, Industry 4.0 is enabling the publishing of data from all the devices from Industry 3.0, semiconductor and automation, converting to information and making available to devices and systems to automate business logic to eliminate hidden constraints, inventory, forecast, preventative maintenance, scheduling, etc. Yes, Matthew, it is all of those things. That is a mouthful though. <laughs> You're definitely an engineer. Michael Brown said, Industry 4.0 is about reducing the risk of experimentation, lowering the barrier of innovation. I love that, I added that in. In, the indus in industry, the idea of experimenting is nearly crazy, but it's the source of innovation. By building a next generation industrial data platform, we make the data available for multiple teams across any organization to act independently on the data, concurrently to innovate while driving the risk to near zero. That is well said, Michael. And in order to do that, you need the unified namespace, like we talk about all the time in our videos. But that's why I loved doing this little exercise is to get everyone's idea and opinion on what Industry 4.0 is, because Industry 4.0 is kind of the combination of all of those things. But in short, the way that we describe Industry 4.0, it actually has a goal. Many people talk about Industry 4.0 and they kind of toss out some buzzwords. They talk, they toss out ML and AI, they toss out automation stack, connecting ERP to connecting OT to IT, but they don't actually present a goal, what the end result of Industry 4.0 is. So in this video, I want to explain to you, I want to show you an example of what Industry 4.0 is, what Industry 4.0 is not, and then I want to show, like, compare an Industry 3.0 auto manufacturer to an Industry 4.0 auto manufacturer side by side so you can see an example at the end of this video of what Industry 3.0 is and what Industry 4.0 is. And I'll give you a little hint. The Industry 3.0 auto manufacturer is leveraging Industry 4.0 technologies but there's a key difference between Industry 3.0 and Industry 4.0 in the way that we define it and in the way that I'm gonna show you and share with you in this video. So this is the Industry 4.0 examples. Thank you for subscribing to 4.0. If you guys are interested in learning more about IIoT, Industry 4.0 and digital transformation, then make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on bell notifications to get notified when we go live every Tuesday and every Wednesday we publish a Whiteboard Wednesday video with Walker Reynolds. I've been shooting content for over two years with Walker and I'm still learning every time I shoot content with him. Last Friday we actually had the Digital Factory Mastermind program which is the sponsor of this video and I'll share a little bit more on that at the end of this video. So without any further ado, let's get into Industry 4.0 examples. All right guys, now that we're over on the desk, 
And let me show you my screen here. So this is an example of an industry 3.0 manufacturer. Now granted, these machines might very well leverage industry 4.0 technologies, right? This SCADA system might be ignition here. Um, but the problem here is their IT department is very much segmented. They're still leveraging the Purdue security model. They still have the automation stack. Um, you know, a lot of times this is paper or a spreadsheet going back and forth between. It's not integrated. That ERP system is not connected into the unified namespace. It's a mess. Even though they're leveraging industry 4.0 technologies, this is an industry 3.0 manufacturer through and through because of the mindset. Now let's move on to the next one. Industry 4.0. Contrast that with industry 4.0, okay? You, they, you know, and, and they may be even leveraging machine learning and AI, but they have not put in the unified namespace here in the middle, this IIoT infrastructure, this platform for solving problems. They haven't treated all of their software, their hardware, their machines, and their people as nodes in an ecosystem and created this unified namespace where all their SCADA, their MES, their ERP, the data can flow continuously through them based on meeting minimum technical requirements. What are the minimum technical requirements, you ask? Well, we use report by exception, edge-driven, lightweight, and open architecture. As long as it meets those four minimum technical uh, requirements, it can be connected directly into the ecosystem. If it doesn't, you can put in an ge edge gateway right here. So let's take another look at a, another example. Actually, here's the prevailing thought in industry, and you can watch the video that Walker did here. But basically, a lot of manufacturers are putting in a data lake and they're creating these digital threads. They're streaming this data, and it might even be over an OPC UA server or an, even an MQTT server, but they're streaming this data, they're creating these digital threads, putting this data into a data lake, and there's some problems with this solution-centered approach. Now, even if you're not using a solution like Rockwell, you know, connected enterprise, you might, you might be fooled into thinking you're going technology driven, but you're doing a solution centered approach by streaming this data into a data lake because you're making assumptions about how the data will be consumed. You're not normalizing your data. You're not abstracting your data. There's gaps in your data because you have this whole entire automation stack. Well, let me go back here. You have this whole entire automation stack. The, with data you can't access in context with your edge data because you don't have a unified namespace. <clears throat> and Walker explains this video much, much better, but a lot of industry 4.0 manufacturers, this is their reality. In fact, Walker consulted with tw uh, you know, a two dozen manufacturers last year. Not one of them had this architecture. So let's show them, we'll show you the architecture that industry 4.0 is. And this is the whole point of this video is that you can't have industry 5.0 without actually achieving industry 4.0. And you're doing the market a disservice if you're saying industry 4.0, this is industry 4.0, but you're not actually educating your customers and you're not educating the market on what industry 4.0 actually is. This is industry 4.0. All of your data is connected into the unified namespace. All of the layers over here on the left are connected into this unified namespace. And you ask, well, Zach, where does the ERP data go? Well, which the question is, which ERP data? If it's ERP relative to site A, it would be under Enterprise UNS, site A UNS, and there'd be a folder for ERP. Just like under site B UNS area, there's a folder for MES. In fact, there's a folder for MES at the line level. So you could also have a folder for ERP at the line level and a folder for ERP at the site level and likewise a folder for ERP at the enterprise level. This technology-driven approach gives you normalization because you can have your edge data and you could have your normalized data right there in context with each other. You could have um, you know, abstraction, there's standardization, there's no gaps or nearly no gaps. The only gaps you're gonna have is equipment that doesn't meet your minimum technical uh, requirements. And so once you're creating this ecosystem, you're creating, you're creating this. You're creating, you're trading all nodes as you're treating all software equipment and people as nodes in an ecosystem. And you're able to achieve the manufacturing holy grail, which is this closed loop integration of your business, which is not possible if you have people in the way here. This is industry 4.0.
and the, your goal is the manufacturing holy grail and the manufacturing holy grail is everything and everyone is plugged into the network all of the business all the layers of your business operate on data and information in real time stakeholders know the current state of the business in real time stakeholders know the future state of the business in real time machine learning and ai analyzes data and makes recommendations for future operational adjustments and then stakeholders approve or not approve those recommended adjustments from ai and they execute and then you continue that process and digital transformation is a process it's not a project and so based on what you know as you expand what you know what you want changes so digital transformation and industry 4.0 is all about putting in the framework and the mechanism in, in place to be able to achieve digital transformation and to be able to achieve the manufacturing industry holy grail. So be wary of any other vendor or marketer out there touting any industry X.0 term. I think they even call it that now without actually clearly explaining what it is and how to get there. And so that's, that's what this video is all about. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested in being able to sell, architect, or implement digital transformation, then join the Digital Factory Mastermind program. It is the tool, it is the training program to help you achieve that goal, whether you are a system integrator for a system integrator or you're a system integrator internally for a manufacturer. Joining the Digital Factory Mastermind program is your secret weapon for success one of our members even calls it that because it is going to transform the way that you implement your daily strategies for your transformation and it's truly the tool to help you architect sell and implement digital transformation initiatives and thank you guys so much for making this video possible click subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video peace